literally eradicating these bugs. There's no question about it, like they're gone and we're doing it in a cleaner way. And in the end process with this, we'll have uh, biochar to use, you know, put it back in the soil, use for new seedlings and, or filtration or whatever else. I'm Ryan Ramage. I own uh, Valley Environmental. And our main part of our company is our air curtain burner. Uh, we one of the first ones in or, or in the Pacific Northwest with this technology. Uh, we brought it to this area because we saw a need for it with so many issues that we face up here. Uh, we have smoke issues, we have invasive species, um, diseases, and just overall just a lot of uh, vegetation biomass. We can make biochar out of this pile of organic material and use that biochar for uh, improving soil health conditions, uh, filtering, filtering and treating stormwater, and also essentially permanently sequestering carbon in the soil that has direct positive impacts for a lot of the other programs and projects that we are undertaking here at, at Clean Water Services and in the Tualatin Basin. Yeah, so my name is John Richard Getz III. I'm a water resources analyst with Clean Water Services in our water resources recovery department. And we're here today looking at a resource recovery option for managing what we, can, what we currently treat as a waste product. There's approximately 1,800 cubic yards of material there that historically what we've done is rent a large tub grinder once or twice a year, maybe every other year, grind that material into chips and either use that, those chips out here at, our, at uh, our Fernhill Natural Treatment System or Fernhill Wetland Area, or take those chips to a landfill. What we're trying to do with using the air curtain incinerator is take that linear process and bend it into a circle so that we are generating this organic material, processing it through an air curtain incinerator into a beneficial product. So as all this wood material burns down, the pieces get smaller and smaller, and the ash and the char material we're left with are basically super saturated with carbon. Because instead of the carbon being released in the environment through smoke in particular matter, it gets cycled back into the fire and gets concentrated in the ash and the, the char material that's left over. We call this biochar. One of the things that, that I've done a lot of uh, in those years of forestry is burning piles out in the forest. Very smoky, and you basically burn all of that material down to ash. And sometimes those fire rings those, that leave the scar on the landscape for a very long time. Biochar in the soil, uh, biochar itself has a lot of surface area, and when uh, put in the soil can help to hold a lot of nutrients, can help to hold, uh, increase the moisture holding capacity of our soils. More moisture in the soil, as our climate gets hotter and drier, is gonna make our capabilities of, of civiculture forestry and managing these riparian forests, it's, it's gonna enhance our capabilities. So right now you might be hearing kind of a, a roaring or a whooshing sound. And what's that caused by is the curtain of air being blown over the top of this firebox. So uh, this part, this kind of black wedge, has a steady stream of cold, fresh air blowing over the top of the firebox. It is creating a lot of turbulence in that firebox, which is creating the sound we're hearing right now. Main source is we have a tier four Kubota diesel engine that runs all this. When we're done at the end of the day, this whole box hydraulically lifts up and we're able to drive right off of the pile. Uh, sometimes people don't care what end product, it's just ash. If they want ash, we'll burn it down and let it go to ash. If they want biochar, we come back in with our water tender and we quench the material and cool it, and that's what leaves the biochar for our customers. When it comes to municipals and communities that are moving their wood waste, do you know where your wood waste ends up? For a lot of municipalities, that can't, when they can't use it in their parks, um, it actually goes to a landfill and it can't biodegrade there. 
a lot of our landfills are kept, it releases methane. And if your landfill facilities are actually outside of county boundaries, you could be breaking that quarantine. This is one of the most devastating forest pests that the United States have ever experienced. Um, even things like Dutch elm disease, this pales in comparison. When it was introduced to Oregon, we knew it had been coming. Uh, one of the things we had created was an Oregon Readiness and Response Plan as a statewide collaboration between us, ODA, uh, USDA APHIS, as well as other agency partners. It has a 99% mortality rate with ash trees, which are planted both as urban street trees or in your yard. You might have one in your backyard, but they're also really an important riparian area tree. In Oregon, we have what is the Oregon ash, uh, Fraxinus latifolia. And in some of our riparian forested wetlands and riparian zones that are seasonally flooded when we have our massive rainstorms in the winter, this is one of the only trees that you'll see in these riparian zones. So moving cut ash that are being removed while they still have EAB present, um, especially if you're doing it in their active flying and mating speed season, which is spring through fall, you could be furthering the spread of emerald ash borer unintentionally. But if you move material like firewood or um, you know, saplings or other infested wood types, you might actually be spreading it through a couple of uninfested counties. That is why one of our main messages with EAB is don't move firewood. You should buy firewood from local uh, within 10 miles of where you're going to use it and then leave it on site when you are done. For everyone asking, what can I do for EAB? I think the number one take home message is no, don't move firewood. The second is learn the signs and symptoms of emerald ash borer. There is a training available online through the Oregon Forest Pest Detectors through OSU. And the third thing is know where your ash are. If you're in a big city, you might actually already have a public street tree inventory. You can ask your local city's parks department about this. A couple of our infestations have been found because people report, and the place to report is the Oregon Invasive Species Hotline. Let's start hammering this pest, you know? Get ahead of it. You know, you can't really argue with burning them to eradicate them over chipping and, you know, saying, are you really getting rid of that, that pest? This, we can turn it into a product that you know, maybe it could go back on these new seedlings that are replacing these diseased ash trees, all these street trees, because uh, another benefit with biochar is it does pull deeper root growth. So it, it would be awesome if, you know, these cities were using this stuff on the street trees to pull down, and maybe we can have another success story of eliminating uh, sidewalk issues, you know, which are common with street trees. So it's just a cool full circle thing that we can make some good stories and maybe make some changes that we've you know, been battling with even some of the smaller things. We're here, we're here with representatives from Oregon Department of Forestry, Oregon Department of Agriculture, in this really cool partnership that, that came together where uh, Oregon Department of Forestry has received some grant funds to do some demonstrations of uh, air curtain incinerator. Uh, Urban and Community Forestry Program is gonna be holding a series of air curtain incinerator demonstration events. Uh, over the course of the next two years, and we're looking for places all throughout the state where we can bring out our air curtain incinerator, burn some uh, wood waste material, and get local people out to come out, uh, see how they're operated, and, and understand their, their, uh, their benefits as both a carbon sink, uh, a way to dispose of wood waste, a sanitation tool, and the creation of biochar, which is an amazing soil amendment material.